Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, very good evening to you all. So uh, we are going to start the problem solving class today, right? And we all know that uh, we all face uh, problems on our everyday lives. And uh, there's always good to have a proper structure to it, right? To uh, solve the problem. So here we are with uh, our expert today, Joy. So yeah, Joy here, uh, he's the founder of Antwork. So he's also an uh, ex uh, McKinsey. sorry, yeah. So he's also an ex McKinsey consultant. He worked there as an engagement manager. And then he's an alumni of ISB, batch of 2013. And he's also the co-founder and trustee of Ashai Foundation, which is a foundation for underprivileged kids. And uh, that is completely for the, um, to standardize the education system for them, right? And uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, I'll just stop sharing and I'll, uh, you can take over, Joy. And Thanks we'll start with the class now. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for the intro and thanks everyone for joining today. Um, so yeah, it's great to have you all in today's class, right? Um, as Diksha mentioned, I have spent quite a bit of time after ISB at McKinsey. Um, so today we are going to actually talk about uh, what I learned in McKinsey in terms of problem solving. And we are going to go deep into creating a issue tree in the class live where I'm expecting all of you to participate, take something away from this class. This is not going to be a theory class at all. This is going to be a participatory class where you get a chance to create an issue tree. Uh, before I go into the depths of problem solving, um, can somebody put it in the chat or just unmute themselves and tell what is a pyramid of payout in corporate world and, and how does that link to problem solving, learning problem solving? Why, why should we even learn problem solving, right? Uh, can somebody unmute themselves and tell or just put it in the chat box? Anyone who wants to volunteer? So no one, no one knows what is a pyramid of payout in corporate world. You guys can use the chat box. You can put it there, yes, no. What do you understand by pyramid of payout? And why should you learn uh, problem solving? I guess most people don't know it. So let me only walk you through that. Uh, so this is the overall pyramid of payout. At the most bottom layer is, are people who actually spend most of their time executing something, right? Uh, they are the order takers. They are they are the people who this is this is the most broad of the pyramid and lowest in terms of salary. They they think day in and day out in terms of what what needs to be done, what my manager has asked me to do today, and so on. Right. Uh, the ones who are above that are called specialists, and they think day in and day out about how. So, for example, if you are in marketing, then a lot of people think about how how you know, should an SEO happen? What are the best practices of doing that SEO? How can I make it better? That is called a specialist. But the ones who are sitting at the top are problem solvers who think about why. Why should I even invest in SEO? Why should I even do digital marketing? Why should I even have a digital marketing manager? The people who answer why are the highest paid people in an industry and hence, hence the need to learn problem solving because if, if your aim is to earn more money as you grow up in your career, you have to get to the top of the pyramid and top of the pyramid is are people who are basically problem solvers. Okay, That is one of the reasons I wanted to go through this is to set the context for today that why do you even need to spend time to learn problem solving. Okay. First, let me take you through this whole idea of uh, McKinsey seven step problem solving. I don't know if all of you know about McKinsey. McKinsey is one of the most globally renowned consulting firm, actually the number one consulting firm in the world. It hires from the Harvard and NCRs of the world. Um, people typically spend time in solving business problems for the client. And it's a very prestigious place to be in. But at the heart of McKinsey as a company, is this idea of problem solving, right? 
today i am going to quickly take you guys through this seven step problem solving and then as i said we are going to deep dive into making one issue tree where i expect all of you to participate i actually it will be good if you guys are you know no formals nothing required but if you can switch on your camera you will learn more from this class because you will see that you are able to participate more and it will be more active for you there will be very little of theory as i said this is the only theory slide so step 1 is about defining the problem this is the hardest step in problem solving the rest of the class today we are only going to do step 1 more or less how do i define a problem step 2 is structuring the problem so you take a problem and you disaggregate it into early hypotheses of what could potentially be the problem the sub problem and sub sub problem that is all about structuring the problem one such way to structure the problem is called issue tree which we are going to use today right step 3 is to prioritize the issues once you have done the you know define a problem once you have structured the problem then your next step is always to prioritize the issues okay when i see working with more young minds right if i ask them a question what people typically do is they randomly start answering the solution before going through these steps for example if i in my work day when i used to ask some people that you know how do i reduce cost or how do i increase revenue people would just directly come giving answers rather than putting a structure to it right today these steps will help you to first say that look it is not about immediate see right now we have already covered three steps there is nothing about solution that we have come and that's the most important thing that you should take away from the class that you need to spend inordinate amount of time defining the problem structuring the problem prioritizing the issue then post that you want to do a deep develop you know deep analysis of the issue tree that you have created right you need to analyze that whatever you think is an issue is it really the issue or not right then thereafter you conduct those analyses once you have conduct the analysis then you synthesize the findings right and then your final step is to develop a recommendation so if i take a step back then you see that out of the seven step right recommendation is the seventh step it is the last thing right a lot more time and effort a mckinsey consultant puts to define a problem structure the problem prioritize the issues then do an you know develop a issue analysis and analysis plan that how do i analyze what kind of data i need to do to analyze this issue then actually conduct those analyses once you have conducted the analyses something around synthesizing findings that will be a separate class that i will take only on synthesizing findings right what is a top down communication and so on and then finally it's about developing recommendation any questions or queries on this mckinsey seven step problem solving as of now before i go to the next slide anybody with any questions queries no okay so we are going to learn something today called as an issue tree okay issue tree is a join yeah so anshula says uh, please define issue analysis yes issue analysis is you know we wrote all the issues right that if if the revenue is down then either the revenue per person is down or the number of customers are down then how do i analyze that issue for example let me take a take a issue india today is facing a problem of vaccination right we have not been able to vaccinate all our people so you may come back and say look the reason why people are not getting vaccinated one there aren't enough of vaccines two there is vaccine but people are not ready to take it right now if you take the second problem there are vaccines but people are not ready to take it then you need to do some analysis to understand whether that is actually a problem or not for example the whole country has lok sabha seats under lok sabha there are assembly seats under assembly seats there are you know gram panchayats and you know municipality uh, boards at that level you will have to go and collect data and say look this many number of 
vaccine centers were set up here. This much is the amount of capacity that the vaccine has on a daily basis. What is the utilization of each of those vaccine centers? And then you will find that there are places where you could have given 20 vaccines every day, but not even two people were turning out to take those vaccines. So then you understand in those talukas or those districts, right? The problem is about people not being not willing to take vaccine and the problem is not about availability of vaccines. So that's what is called as issue analysis. Take an issue, conduct that analysis based on the data that I said to be able to come to a meaningful conclusion. Make sense? Okay. Anybody else? Uh, hello, Come sir. On. I have another general doubt on consulting. Yes. Yeah. So uh, generally in consulting, like for example, McKinsey and other top level uh, consulting firms, uh, are there instances where like you give a really good solution to a company for solving their problem, but then they aren't able to, like they're not competent enough to implement it. And have there been, like are there instances where the company is not able to implement it and as a result of that, they're not able to see like McKinsey's solution come into the actually happen? Yeah, there can be because from an idea stage to an actual implementation, there are multiple things that can go wrong, right? In the critical thinking class, you guys will understand what is called as a two by two and so on. There are, uh, we will talk about those frameworks when, when we, if you attend those master classes. So there is, there is something called as value and there is something called as implementation feasibility. So when the implementation feasibility is high and the value is low, we call low hanging fruit. You can easily do it. But sometimes the, the value is high, but the implementation feasibility is low, right? People still go after that, right? But they're not able to implement those solutions. So there are multiple such situations we are going to discuss. But to answer your question, yes, many a times it happens either by design or because of other problems which are related to change management because of which people don't be people are not able to implement solutions vaccine is an amazing example right even if there are so much of vaccine in you know uh, more developed nations with higher per capita income they are still at 60 65 percent vaccine levels and they have not got 200 percent vaccination levels because among the, the you know target population because there are people who are just not willing to take that action so beyond just a solutioning there is always mindset and you know, and mindset is one of the biggest problem that you solve in consulting world to able to make change management. Thank you, sir. Okay. There is one more question I have in the chat box. I'm going to go to that one first. Um, it's coming from Shubhash Singh. Uh, Shubhash is saying prioritize the issue. Yeah, perfect. So prioritize the issue means once, see, when we do an issue tree, I'm going to do one today. In any situation, you are not going to have one issue. You're going to have 10, 20, 30 issues. Now you can't go after solving everything on day one. For example, in this whole issue, again, I'm talking about the vaccine, right? In one particular district, you may have two or three different type of problems. The, the problem may be of both the availability of vaccine, problem may be of, you know, willingness to take that vaccine, problem may be of, you know, uh, availability of medical staff to give that vaccine, problem maybe of supply chain to bring the vaccine to the center, all of those problems. Right? Now you will use some methods like, like I talked about a two by two framework, right? To prioritize the issues that which one do you want to solve first, which one not. For example, the same vaccine issue, you'll say, hey, look, this district has 100,000 people, 1 lakh people out of which our analysis says that at least 20% are willing to take vaccine if it is readily available. In that case, I would rather solve the supply chain and the availability of medical talent to administer those vaccines immediately so that I can at least safeguard 20% people before I solve for the remaining people who are not willing to take it. Right? The other way of looking at it is you always take up those issues first, which has an 80-20 impact. right? which means in any problem in life, you will say that this problem will solve 80% of my cases. Only remaining people are the ones whom I will not be able to solve. I'll figure that out later. So you always prioritize issues based on 80-20. You first go after the ones that are one liver that is going to help you do 80% of things done. You go after them first. Make sense? 
so you are saying example gop working 14 hours resulting health problem gop versus health gop versus relation what does gop what do you mean by gop you mean the health worker shubhash okay job employment okay so you mean job versus health job versus relation so you are trying to solve a problem in your life that which one i want to do is that what you are trying to solve in that case you should first define what problem you are trying to solve you have gone to step 3 before defining step 1 if you are at any point in time you wanted to first define what am i trying to solve what what is what is that one problem that i want to solve so if your problem to solve is i want better work life balance then by definition what you what you are looking at is getting better work life balance versus you want to say that i want to double my earning in the next 3 years then that's the problem that you are trying to solve so in this kind of situation please go to step 1 and define the problem before you start to understand how to prioritize the issues make sense okay any other question guys so she yes, has asked yes yes please go on check yeah yes sir uh, shake here so my question is like in consulting you come across clients who say like uh, let's suppose they asked you to solve some particular problem regarding the marketing but then when you analyze and when you try to define a problem you see there there, there is some need to be done in the operational aspect so i mean do you move to the second step before uh, like okay will i'll work on work on marketing and later will work on operations or is it like aapka operations hi galat hai will do work on operations and then go to marketing you never do consulting based on what a client says you do based on consulting what data says okay you, ne you never go to a consulting and say say that you know somebody told me to fix marketing that's why i just go and start fixing it no you first talk to the client saying what is the problem for example the client may say that i want to increase profit and i believe my marketing is a problem good listen to them but you do your own analysis and then come back to an answer that look I do believe the marketing is a problem, but that's only twenty percent of your problem. Eighty percent of the problem is operations. Then you convince the client with data that I want to do operations. So consulting has nothing to do with what somebody else is telling you to do, right? Consulting is all about understanding from the client what problem you want to solve, and then doing an independent analysis of how to solve that problem. Okay. We talked about issue tree. Let us all. do a very simple issue tree before we do a bigger one right and i am going to help you guys do the first level here L customer said i want to increase profit right no in a in our you know 12th class we had read that profit is revenue minus cost everybody knows this right revenue minus cost is equal to profit okay so this is your level one of the issue tree you increase revenue you reduce cost you are going to make more profit okay then next level is all about how do i increase revenue right and i'm going to tell you the formula here and then we are going to do the bigger issue tree where you guys are going to contribute okay so increase revenue is selling more or increase the price right selling more means more number of customers or you know customers buying more number of products and increase price is the pri average price goes up right for example you sell mobile phones you say that i want to increase my revenue last year i sold 1 million phones this year i want to sell 1.2 million phones that is sell more or you said last year i sold a phone for 100 dollars this year i want to sell the same 1 million phones but i want to sell it for 150 dollars that's about increasing price now the interesting thing here is something called as misi right together this is all about making it mutually exclusive while collectively exhaustive revenue and cost put together is all you need to know about increasing profit there is no third thing if that if there is a third thing here then this tree is not complete similarly for revenue selling more and increasing price is all you need within selling more again there will be 10 other things but at that level this is the one right now the another important thing is these are all 
mutually exclusive while you are focusing on selling more number of you know mobile phones you are not cared about price you may say that i may reduce price to sell more mobile phones and then you will do an analysis right that if i reduce the price by 20% can i sell more than 20% to make up for that or no but while you are focusing on selling more you are not going to talk about increasing price because you can sell more even by reducing price it's a mutually exclusive kind of lever similarly while reducing cost you can either reduce fixed cost or reduce variable cost right this is a very very simple rudimentary example of a uh, issue tree right anybody has any questions on this issue tree otherwise we'll get to some more fun then no okay so let's all of us today in the next 15 20 minutes or little more try and do this idea of how to make a restaurant profitable right all of you shake your brain take a pen and paper if you have feel free to put it in the chat box i will go very slowly you're not going to complete the issue tree because a full fledged issue tree looks as big as this if you see you're not going to be able to do it i just want to get you guys some flavor of how to do the issue tree i'm going to help you guys but i want to first listen to answers that you have you can put it in the chat box you can also raise your hands and then i'll ask you to unmute yourself and say the answer first layer i am going to do it for you okay so in restaurant profitability i said increase revenue can i taught you guys reduce cost let's focus on this idea of this one first okay increase revenue let's focus on this one first to color code this little bit background color so that all of you know this is the one that i want to do let's all, all of you can see the screen everybody is on the screen now right we are focusing only on the increase revenue we learned last time that while you are focusing on one side of the issue tree we're not going to discuss the other side of the issue tree focus only on increasing revenue somebody has hired mckinsey or us as consultants all of us body of us in the call is you know trying to increase revenue of the of the uh, you know restaurant that's why they have hired us we need to give them an answer of how can you increase your revenue tell me your answers of how do you think how can a restaurant increase its revenue put it in the chat box raise your hands and then talk let's wait for one minute for you guys to come up with some answers meanwhile people who already have answers you can keep putting it in the chat box shivam says increase sales yes increase revenue means increase the amount of money that the restaurant is making every month that that mm. i want to do yes Uh, more customers by offering certain discounts or schemes. Okay. Uh, who was that? Uh, Muskan. Muskan says discounts or schemes. Okay. Let me add that. Insert a child node. This is Muskan, and Muskan says discount or schemes. Okay. Anyone else? I think oh, here in the. You give me one second. I am going to take a couple of them from. Shaik says, Shaik is talking about, uh, you know, menu. Okay, change the menu. He's saying add more more food items in the menu. Arunima is talking about. I'm going to put her initials are AS. She is saying introduce new products, which is same as menu. Increase price. So Arunima is also talking about increase, increase price. I want to just write the shortcuts, guys. Okay, then. Oh, this is a good one. Y K Yathanshu Kothari. Uh, y K is talking about a good one here. Y K is coming with an answer that increase the service time. Okay, increase service time. Okay, what else, guys? Keep keep it coming. Keep it coming. Ah, uh, A S Arjun Suresh is saying diversity diversify the type of cuisines. This goes under menu. More type of cuisines. More type of cuisines. Okay, start delivery service. Another good answer is coming from Abhishek Singh, right? Abhishek Singh is saying, ABS is saying, uh, start delivery. What else? What else? 
uh, by increasing customer. So wait, wait, where, what is Jadeep's answer? Increasing customer retention percentage. Correct. So you want to re retain more customers. How do you do that? Combo options is similar to discounts or schemes. If this is running restaurant, look at the days where we have a lot of customers and what are the items mostly looked at. Okay, so you are saying that, you know, improve the match the demand to the supply of what you sell. Improve customer service. This is a good one coming from Satyajit. Improve customer service. S J Satyajit is talking about customer service. Okay, customer service. What else? Keep it coming, guys. Customer satisfaction under the similar name. Ekta is also saying the same thing. Let's put Ekta also here. Okay. Have other kinds of entertainment. This is part of another good thing coming from Arjun Shures. Arjun Shures. A lot of people with the name AS is contributing here. Um, Arjun Shures is saying about entertainment. What else? Keep it coming. Barsha is saying good quality. Okay, so under Varsha is talking about food quality. Okay. okay. What else? Food quality. Uh, loyalty, service, and membership. Somebody already talked about it. It's coming again from Abhishek Singh about, uh, I think I had missed it out for earlier. So sorry about that. So loyalty. Okay. What else? Add fast food, change in the menu, more type of cuisines. Look at all the other orders, which are areas which are untapped, like online free delivery. Okay, start delivery. Yes, okay. Training service people with good customer relation or training service people with the right service. Customer service. Okay. Increase footfall of customer by providing recreational under entertainment. Okay. Another two minutes, guys. Keep it coming. Then I'll I'll tell you what is right or wrong about this. Loyalty schemes for customer retention. Loyalty has come through. Okay. Arunima is coming with another answer. Partner with more online food delivery channels. Yeah, improve your delivery. Okay, what else? Have a great online presence. Perfect, online presence. So uh, that can be another line itself that about more online within that one can be delivery. Okay, what else? Better promotion and advertising. Okay, one other thing um, is can be better marketing. Okay, better marketing is coming from Mushkan. Okay, better marketing, right, okay. And Muskan is talking about better marketing, changing aesthetics, part of entertainment. And yes, yeah. Soham is saying creative communication, part of this ambience. Okay, so let me ambience, aesthetics. There are a lot of points coming around ambience and aesthetics. Okay. Venture into other business. Okay. You are completely saying that not just change, you know, other product line, just completely new product line. Sorry. Okay, uh, other product line. Okay. Okay, last one minute. Uh, hygiene, pre immunization, correct. So, all of this comes under ambience. Free giveaways comes under uh, discount or schemes. Franchisee comes under, okay, franchise is another, another good one. Franchise. Okay. Okay, space, uh, restaurants, and you know, better use of space. Okay. users okay lower price sourcing that again lower price sourcing will come in cost if data analysis provide that restaurant football is maximum on weekend nights improve breakfast and lunch option as per the types of customers are getting okay higher so basically you are saying increase utilization at odd times last minute guys then i'll tell you what is right or wrong about this what you guys have done this is some very good answers and then some things you guys can improve. Uh, Nakul says hire better manager chefs. Uh, Abhishek says celebrity chefs. So you are saying use influential marketing. Influencer marketing using celebrity chefs. Okay, what else? Shoham says, uh, sorry, Mushkan says take feedback. Okay. What else? New services like live performance, better performance. Okay, let's take a pause now. Let's take a pause. Alcoholic beverages, part of menu. So what you guys did is 
you are talking about things tuck 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 one by one things right let's take this only and i will open a new mind map and i'll show you how i will start to organize this into some some ways open a map i'm going to use the data that you talked about right copy this restaurant profitability okay i'm going to copy this increase revenue because this is the two inputs that i gave you guys perfect now if you look at your inputs that you guys have given right the best way of doing a problem solving is first to create a messy level of trees right so when i said increase revenue the first thing you guys should have put together is right i want to either increase customers or i want to increase average revenue per customer which is also called as rpu okay good now in order to increase the customers you guys said i am going to do something around marketing there are lots of ideas you gave on marketing this is a marketing idea discount or schemes right loyalty is a marketing idea right uh influencer marketing is a marketing idea so then under marketing you guys gave a lot of ideas that i want to improve marketing but you quickly jumped into that without forming this issue tree and i don't expect you to do it on day one i'm just giving you the right answer how to do this right so under marketing then you will say that i want to do influencer marketing getting a celebrity chef i want to do loyalty program i want to run you know campaigns how to performance marketing whatever whatever this is the way to do under marketing good then second thing you said i want to increase customer by increase the spectrum of my offering right spectrum of my offering spectrum of my offering you guys get got ideas that i want to add new cuisines in my menu right new cuisines in menu some of you said that i want to i want to do you know uh you gave the idea that some of you told that i want to have um you know live entertainment some of you said that i want to do you know add new product lines like i i do only lunch i want to also do breakfast that kind of ideas this was all about spectrum of uh increase the spectrum of my offering right this is increase the spectrum of my offering okay good i market more i have more to offer then you also said that i want to improve my offering itself right which is to say that if i am a if i am a sit in restaurant then lot of you talked about ambiance and some of you talked about the service that my restaurant provides by training people etc perfect then you guys said i market i have a lot to sell some people are going to this is your offline offering that i want to, and, and and under offline offering you also talked about you know adding entertainment and such such ideas then you guys said that okay i market i increase the spectrum of my offering i want to do offline offering but i also want to do what we call as additional channels i want to do additional channels to market my product right additional channels you said either i go online and set up my own shopify kind of a thing where i sell and do self delivery or i partner with other delivery you know apps like zomato swiggy whatever else right and that's another idea that you guys gave right then you also said that another idea of additional channel was i just do a franchise also about increasing your channels right uh what else came for you guys uh, let me look discount increase price i'll come to that service time yes under offline there is another way of doing is uh you know you you increase your availability right apart from additional channels under offline you can also do a to make the offline better make it available longer
So I think I have covered most of the points here. Now you see the way you guys went after this, which is definitely a good one, actually a great one for the first time. But when you understand how to do issue trees better, you are not going to quickly jump into the answer. You're first going to create layer by layer thought process of how to, how to do an issue tree better. Increase revenue means increasing customers. Okay, I can do customers by marketing. I can sell more. I can improve my offline. I can do additional channels. Then come to the next level of ideas. How do I do this business? Then come and prioritize based on data that which one should I put my effort in? This is one way of, I've done an issue tree uh, before the class. This is one way of looking at it, right? There are many ideas to do marketing like you guys also came up with roll out offers and discounts, branding, referrals. Uh, you know, reference was not discussed in today's class, but loyalty programs. Quality is all about ambience. Quality is about how your server behaves, server communication, train the server, treat the customers right. Quality is about cleanliness. Somebody talked about, you know, pre-immunization and all of that. Quality is about speed of service, parking, all of that. Then another thing under service improvement is about coverage, more home delivery, opening hours, average time per day, number of opening days, sitting capacity improve. Then it's all about product offering, you know, more items in the menu, add new item segments. If you are an offline restaurant, it's also about more location, branches, collaboration, franchises. And then there is this whole idea of increasing ARPU, where you increase the menu, you cross sell other food, you reduce the portion so that people add more, more idea. You add, you know, increase the length of the stay by adding Wi-Fi, etc. right? So let me take a pause here and see if you guys are enjoying what this is. What is the purpose of color? No, nothing. I just... I just highlighted so that you guys don't go and start doing something on the other side. I just wanted to talk about revenue for once because the idea is when you are doing one side, don't come up with the ideas on the other. Like there was one idea here that I want to, uh, you know, source the product from strategic sourcing, but that's a cost lever. That is not a revenue lever. Okay. Is this making sense? Did you guys, are you guys understanding a little bit of how to do you know, issue trees, is it making, making some, some idea in terms of how to, how to get this done. Okay. Perfect. Uh, can you guys take a little bit of shot on how to do the cost side of it? And I will again give you the first lever here. Sorry. Uh, first lever I'll give you. Fixed cost. Variable cost. Can you guys again, again, I'm just coloring the fixed cost because I want you guys to develop this habit of focus on one thing before you go to the other. Just tell me how to, sorry, this color is already used. I'll use some other color. Um, seems that I take up blue more often than not like this. Uh, fixed cost. Can you just talk about how to reduce the fixed cost of a restaurant? Any ideas? Yes, issue tree is nothing to do with what the company is currently doing. Once you have the issue tree, then you use the company's data to prioritize the issues. Your issue tree is always a missy issue tree. This is how this a restaurant can improve. Obviously, knowing some variables of the restaurant. For example, if it is a cloud kitchen, then you won't add the you know, offline kind of levers there. You'll only do the, do the online ones and so on. But more or less, an issue tree is an issue tree based on what a problem you have at hand. Getting the data from that restaurant will help you to prioritize that issue tree. How do you reduce fixed cost of, uh, of a restaurant? Somebody is talking about, uh, who is this? Akash. Akash is talking about rent negotiation. Perfect. Very good lever. Rent. I want to reduce my rent. Abhishek is talking about electricity and land. So land is similar to rent. He's also talking about what is called as utilities. One such utility is electricity. Under utility, again, like the way we, we discussed last time, first do one bigger layer before you go to the next layer. Under utilities, you have electricity, you have, uh, you have water. But tell me one thing, is this a fixed cost, guys? Or is this a variable cost?
So using a solar power and completely shifting out of this is definitely a fixed cost, right? Which is you are saying that I am going to make any fixed under electricity. I am going to make a what is called as capital investment to fundamentally reduce to change my supply. But typically, if you are not for most restaurants, they are not going to do this. Utilities typically come under variable cost. Typically. What else? Supplier negotiation. Supplier negotiation it will again come under variable cost. Efficient utilization of manpower. That's a tricky one. It's a good one actually. Um, so restaurants definitely have two types of labor force. Uh, you'll have to understand something called as a util curve. So every restaurant has, or at least the big ones like Cheesecake Factory in America, which is like a not a very you know fast food restaurant, but not even a high-end sitting dining restaurant, they have something called as a fixed number of people who are more or less coming there every day. And then depending on how much they believe that it's a Friday evening or something, they get some temp resources to cover more, right? So absolutely, there is a certain amount of fixed cost that you can reduce in your labor cost that typically happens in what we call as admin and GA departments, right? More administrative and general administration kind of department. There you can reduce the fixed cost of employees by absolutely the lever you talked about, which is using ERP systems and so on, which is in the back end of, of this. You can also use automation in terms of food cooking and reduce some, you know, chef's helper and so on. Okay. Anyone else, any other ideas, thoughts, other one minute, grow your own produce. Again, it's another very, unless you're a very big person, you won't do it, but yes. Um, that lever would typically come from the idea of reducing your very well cost through what we call as uh, strategic sourcing. One such idea of strategic sourcing will be to what we call upward uh, forward uh, upward integration uh, or backward integration, where you go upstream and start creating your own. Hasn't been a good idea for most people, by the way. Convert just to delivery. Yes, one idea to reduce the fixed cost of rent is just to do away with the office and or, or the center and just do deliveries, yes. Become a cloud kitchen. So what you are now talking about is a way to solve this problem. So the problem is fixed cost of rent and how to solve it is, I just want to be delivery or a cloud kitchen. Good. Um, there are several other variable costs as well. I, I have some answer for you guys. I can show you here, but, but again, you can add a lot more. Uh, fixed cost is about rent. You guys talked about a staff salary, setup cost. Right, strategic procurement, regulatory cost, set up the interiors, and then a lot of this is variable cost like raw materials, you know, like infra maintenance, reduce consumables. By raw materials, I mean you just optimize your inventory, you optimize how you store, you you reduce uh, spillage, you reduce daily consumption, um, you you improve your turnaround time of how much, how fast you get, and so on. Good. Uh, so this is an example of how you do issue trees, and in in our actual class and all. We'll do several of them. This is just a masterclass to quickly go through, give you the ideas of uh, when do we use this every single day. You can use issue trees in anything you do in life. You want to decide on restaurant, you can uh, where to go and eat food tonight. You can use an issue tree. You you want to decide on uh, whether I want to go to college or drop out to become an entrepreneur. You can use an issue tree. You want to decide whether to marry or stay single, you can use the issue. Any decision that you do, you can use the issue. Not at all a problem. Good. Um, any, any last thoughts about this um, issue trace? Otherwise, I just want to talk to you about a little bit on a mindset for problem solving as the last thing in today's class. Any questions, guys, you can type uh, in here. Otherwise, let's just quickly go through mindset and we will again use the last few moments on, on some amount of issue trees. So the way to do a become good in times of your problem solving is being ever curious, right? About every element of problem. Being imperfectionist, uh, it is very, very difficult to, you know, get a perfect issue tree on day one. You have to live with ambiguity. You don't know what you don't know. You have to have a dragon eye, dragonfly eye, which means a very top down view of how do I tuck, 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 create my tree and then figure out, keep iterating it to make it better and better. 
pursuing occurrent behavior and restless experiment uh right tapping into collective intelligence uh, and practicing show and tell you know showing this issue tree to people and doing it right let me go back to uh, it seems a lot of people are interested in asking some more broader set of questions about their career and so on uh, is there a way to enter into consulting from a software background without doing mba it is uh, there is uh, there is a way to do that people do get hired from uh, you know i am sent so uh, sorry from iits and so on as business analyst who have done only undergraduate and have not done mba uh sent stephens i myself have hired people from there in mckinsey uh, but typically people do enter more number of people do enter consulting after mba but there is a whole lot of new jobs that are coming up in startups as growth specialist uh, where you can get into that job without doing an mba if you do a good growth mba and if you understand the tips and tricks of that any other questions and thoughts guys before we close any questions thoughts comments i hope you guys learned something new today what is the definition any program which you conduct yes we are planning to conduct a growth mba manoj and uh, which me and some of the other guys from mckinsey etc are going to drive that program uh, we are going to teach growth mba in our company we are going to send you a separate email with the details on that what is the uh, yes we are going to have have um, anything more on solving case studies there are hundreds of more things on solving case studies we are going to do a full program called as growth mba uh, where we are going to talk to talk, talk you through what are the levers of understanding a pnl responsibility understanding critical thinking understanding uh, you know how to do how to you know how to understand different problems in different scenarios um, understand how to prioritize those issues understand a little bit of finance understand a little bit of marketing to be able to you know prioritize those issues and so on how can issue tree help in time management also absolutely for example if you say that if my problem is that i never get time to spend you know time on meditation for example if that's your problem then you first break down your issue tree into say uh, you know in various ways first you say that look my problem is i don't get time for meditation very good you say number one part of the problem is am i even willing to do meditation and second yes i am willing to do but i actually don't find time if if you are willing to do meditation itself is a problem then you would solve that part but if your other part is that okay i actually want to do meditation but i don't get time then you break down and say look what are the value added task that i am doing what are the incidental task i am doing and what are the non value added task that we are doing on a daily basis to actually go ahead and you know uh, spend my time what is value added is actually attending sessions spending time on your work all of that incidental is about you know you taking bath uh, all of that is incidental in life non value added is you know hours of just you know watching some entertainment just you know chatting or just you know lazing around those are non value added so then you understand where can you reduce your time we have a link if you are interested in doing the uh, doing the growth mba it's a invite only program so submit that form that that has been put here and we can evaluate your profile and then get back to you uh, in terms of uh, you know your acceptance to the growth mba program uh, do give a feedback on on how this session was will help me to also understand the rest of the upcoming sessions how we can do better we are going to do more sessions like this um let me check the uh your advice on how can a fresher of skill skills and end up as a good consultant uh, most important thing to do here is practice continuous learning right uh, keep learning every day look at different videos attend this kind of live classes and you know as i said i also have done uh, we are also launching a full full project program where uh, you know you can 
you can keep looking at that and understand from people that what are the new ways you will understand of solving different problems because this is not a skill that you can get in day in one day um it's something that you have to develop over a very long period of time perfect um any other thoughts processes uh you know in your mind uh in terms of uh you know any other questions that you have uh, in your mind today how to navigate an issue tree if you are totally new to a problem topic and don't know what problems can arise uh, that's a good very good question you need to have some subject matter knowledge of what you are doing for example if you don't know that profit is revenue minus cost it will be harder for you to do it and that's why when we are teaching growth mba we are going to teach you a lot of initial equations that are then going to take you to the next level uh yeah some uh, tips uh, give a little idea on structuring the problem yes uh structuring the problem as i said the the most important way is to take a step back and create those mishi ideas that revenue is always part of customers multiply by average revenue per customer number of customers is you know you first understand that what are the different ways your customers come and then use those levers to get that so the way to do it is at every point you have to check whether this issue tree you have created is missy or not what roles can go into after growth mba um one of the things that we are looking forward to is india startup story is huge now so helping people to work for large startups in pnl roles is one major thing that we are looking at also obviously you can grow in your own companies as well as you gain that gain that skill but pnl ownership like pnl ownership is think of a company like swiggy you may own an entire city in swiggy that's a pnl owner or you may own a particular credit card in a fintech that's a pnl owner or you may own a particular account in a saas company that's a pnl owner so a lot of this next level of jobs that are coming up which are very high paying very high amount of responsibility good salary is what we call pnl ownership and that's the kind of jobs that we are thinking about okay any other question thoughts information versus understanding problem types perception based problem versus mindset based for problem uh there is no problem which is perception based problems are always data based that's how consultants work we always look at the right data to make a call rather than just you know randomly doing it based on what we perceive to be a problem any other thoughts because otherwise i think we are almost out of the time um uh, we had more to respect your time as well i hope all of you had a good learning session today you you um as always the more experienced people the problem solvers no not at all uh there are a lot of young people who are really good problem solvers it all depends on your clarity of thought your ability to step back you know so you, on the other side if you have too much experience you tend to use that experience cloud your judgment what can be a problem it is sometimes the other way around any good book on problem solving there are good lectures out there why combinators have that uh, you know some case books are there um, so you can look at that but uh, not much of books have been written unfortunately on problem solving itself perfect thanks a lot uh, can you take us to pyramid slide yes the pyramid slide what i talked about today is the most money is earned by people who answer the question of why versus how right because in your early part of your career you are always answering how okay because your job is you have been somebody has told you that you know today you have to do something like run an seo you're just doing that so that's at the bottom of the pyramid the guys who are on the top of the pyramid are why they decide that do i want to even invest in seo through the same kind of issue tree that you said for example in the restaurant problem one of the marketing lever was also to do better seo if you have your own website right so that then do i need to invest there 
should i actually go and tie up with an app what is the right thing to do that is a that is a, a thing that people have to do what not is a problem uh, what do you mean by that subhash what not is a problem you mean how to identify if this is a real problem or not it should have a measurable impact it should have a measurable impact like somebody said right how do i how do i you know balance work life i said sorry if, uh, there was a question about i never get time i never get time is not a problem you first define that problem that i never get time to do meditation because that's a measurable impact that's a problem i never get time is not a problem everybody has 24 hours so you are getting that time you are on the same planet as us okay perfect any other last questions thoughts comments or else thanks for joining it was wonderful and we'll have further such sessions i hope all of you guys liked what persuaded you to start ant walk yes so the idea of ant walk basically is you know when ants walk they always touch each other's antennas and they communicate information among themselves so when we started ant walk our idea was to start world's first social learning platform where you learn from real professionals and not from academicians to further your career and that is where we are going to you know get there so that we are able to all whether it's growth mba or any other program that we we'll run in our company like cyber security digital marketing data engineering all the programs are run by real professionals who have a relevant pockets and not by people who have Uh, you know who are academicians that's why that motivated uh, me to start and work perfect thanks a lot guys thanks a lot for uh, uh, doing this the recording of this will be available on our antwork luma page so want to do that um, and thanks once again for joining today